Lightning is one of the most fascinating of the natural phenomena and one of the most fascinating geophysical phenomena as well. One can go on to see lightning to an extent that there can be no less than 284 flickers say in an hour. That is in Catatumbo, Venezuela. But then it is going to be seen as uh, much and in such an intensity in certain places uh, like that of uh, West Bengal as well, where the amount of atmospheric electricity in the atmosphere is very, very high. Lightning is actually a brilliant flash of light produced by discharge of a uh, static electricity which can be about 100 million volts. Can you imagine that? Now, the potential for an electric discharge goes on to exist and it exists wherever there is a charge there is a charge difference that is a, there is some degree of a difference in the charge that is between two objects normally neutral object becomes negatively charged when it gains electrons that is a negatively charged subatomic particles and positively charged when it loses one electron. And see, this is how exactly that you can go to see this phenomena all in all in this place. Now, that is, uh, when we are going to be talking about this phenomena, we, it is going to be all about the loss or the gain of the electrons. So when differences in electric charge develop within, the, within a cloud underground, the stage is uh, set for lightning on a clear day. That means when there is no cloud cover at all, the Earth's surface is negatively charged and the upper troposphere is positively charged there. As a cumulonimbus cloud develops, and you can take a look at it, that is, uh, this is the way that a cumulonimbus cloud goes on to look like. That is going to be the surface. The distance between the surface uh, and the cloud can go on to be something like 1000 meters or 1 kilometer and from the base of the cloud to the top of it it can go on to be 15 to 16 kilometers to about even 10 kilometers as well depending on the latitude for example in high latitude it's because the troposphere is low that's why it can go on to be 10 kilometer so on a clear day when there is no cloud the earth's surface is negatively charged but when there is a cloud as a cumulonimbus cloud goes on to develop it a charge separation takes place within the cloud that is a th there is good amount of a updraft and downdraft that goes on to take place in a cumulonimbus cloud so charge separation takes place uh, within the cloud so that the upper region of the cloud becomes positively charged and the base of the cloud goes on to become negatively charged this is plus this is going to be Minus. The negatively charged cloud base then induces a positive charge on the portion of the ground underlying the cloud. That is, in this case, in response to it, the ground goes on to become positively charged, and this is the way that electricity conducts itself. That is, as it is going to be negatively charged, this is the way that the electricity conducts in this region. Since Air is a very good insulator, therefore, as a thunderstorm cell forms, that means this is a thunder cloud, as a cumulonimbus cloud goes on to form, electric charge is built up and a tremendous potential develops for an electric discharge. That is, a, why is it that the electric charge is built up? Because a, that is how they are going to be carried. So, when a thunderstorm cell reaches its mature stage, that is, a, it becomes bigger and bigger. The electric resistance of the air breaks down and lightning occurs by neutralizing the electric charges. That is, the as it goes on to reach its mature stage, then reaching its mature stage means that the electric resistance of the air goes on to break down and then, then lightning occurs by neutralizing the electric discharges. Now, why is it that the charge separation takes place in a cumulonimbus cloud, in such type of a cloud? is not generally going to be well known but then we can go to make it understand it so this is uh, something that you can go to understand it uh, somewhat better in this case uh, that is to begin with uh, this is how exactly a mature cloud is going to be developing and see these positively charged ions are moving upward 
and in response to it, uh, the whole of the negatively charged ions are going to be at the base and the ground goes on to become positively charged and that is how the electricity is going to be conducted from between the base of the cloud and the ground in this case here. And that is how the charge takes place in this case here. Now, understanding it, coming back to it. So why is it that this type of a charge separation in the cumulonimbus cloud goes on to take place? Here? The most plausible explanation in this is when supercooled water droplets are carried to supercooled water droplets, that means those water droplets that are going to be in a liquid form even at minus 10, 15, 20 degree centigrade. So when supercooled water droplets are carried up to levels where the temperature is below minus 20 degree centigrade, they're going to freeze from their surface inward. That means the freezing goes on to take place from their surface inward. That is how the freezing goes on to take place in this case. You can go to pick up a separate diagram. That is, if that is going to be a hailstorm or so, then this is the way that the freezing starts taking place within the of the super cold water droplets. The cold outer surface becomes positively charged with H ions. This is the surface that goes on to have a H ions that goes on to become positively charged. And the warmer cores go on to be charged with that is OH ions in this case. That is going to be OH ions. Now as freezing continues, that means as it keeps on freezing, the core of these hell stones, these are the hell stones here, they go on to expand. That is the core, this core goes on to expand. That means if this is going to be the case, then that is how the freezing has gone to take place in this case. Now the core goes on to expand. It goes on to expand. And as it expands, it shutters. It, uh, what we are going to be saying it when it goes into shutter, it is going to be called by the name of Grockel pellet. It is going to be known as Grockel pellet. The small positively charged particles, these are, they mean this goes into splinter, break apart. The small positively charged particles is splinter from the cells and are carried upward by turbulence. That is, within this cloud, when this happens, in within a cumulonimbus cloud, then the small particles are going to be carried upwards. This is the place that they are going to be carried. This, these are small positively charged particles which have splintered from the hailstone. And why is it that the hailstone goes to form? A small droplet goes on to be moving upward. Then it goes into have a coating. Again, it goes into come here. Then there is again going to be carried upward. Then there is going to be another coating. So it comes, it becomes bigger and bigger and so on. And as it goes on to become bigger, the core goes on to splinter. As the core goes on to splinter, then the small positive chance particles are going to be taken upward by it. What we are going to be saying that is air moving upward. So the small positively charged particles is printed from the cells and carried upward by turbulence while the larger and negatively charged particles fall to the base of the cloud. So and this goes on to this become, becomes negative with the bigger particles falling all apart in this case. So as a result, the upper part of the cloud is left with a positive charge. This part of the cloud is going to be positive and the base goes on to become negative. And uh, the base goes on to become negative charge. Uh, so as the cloud moves, the negatively charged cloud base alters the charge at the earth's surface. That means as it goes on to move, these negatively charged particles go on to alter. That is the earth's base. Uh, why exactly they are going to get altered? What was there? It was negatively charged. But uh, because the cloud has gone to develop uh, a negative charge, uh, in response to it, the surface of the earth goes on to become positively charged. So as the cloud moves, the negatively charged cloud base alters the charge at the earth's surface directly below by repelling the negatively charged particles. This is how exactly it goes on to get repelled and consequently it goes on to become positively charged. The earth's surface beneath the cloud acquires a net positive charge because they go to repel the negatively charged particles that's why that goes on to become positively charged and that goes on to acquire a net positive charge. These charge differences built to millions or even hundreds of millions of volts. So as the charge accumulation in the cloud increases the opposing electric charges are more strongly attracted to each other 
and eventually the insulating layer of the air that is this insulating layer the air is going to be insulating layer that means in between the insulating layer of the air between the charges cannot keep them apart any longer and then a discharge takes place here. This discharge takes place in the form of this lightning flash. This is how it goes to take place in the form of a lightning flash. Of course it goes to take place here as well. Here as well. It takes place in the form of a lightning flash. The individual components that make up each of these flash are called as strokes or they are going to be called as bulbs. And they are massive electric currents caused by the meeting of negative and positive charge and sustained by the positive charges. They travel very, very fast. Can you imagine 96,000 kilometers a second? That is the speed at which they go to travel. Each stroke is separated by 50 milliseconds and usually 3 to 4 strokes per flash. Of course, this is something that you can't go to see with naked eyes, but then this is what happens. It is this rapid repetition that gives the lightning's flickering appearance. That is a keeps on getting it's repeated repeated and so on because it takes place in only milliseconds and that is why it goes on to have a flickering appearance the process continues until all the charges in the cloud have been dissipated that is this these charges have been completely dissipated and keeps on happening then a lightning strokes begins when the electric field near the cloud base frees electrons in the air immediately below thereby ionizing the air Lightning stroke begins when the electric field near the cloud base, near this cloud base, who frees electrons, either electrons are going to be dispelled and therefore the air goes on to become ionized. The ionized layer becomes a conducting path, that is the path through which it goes on to take place and this conducting path is called as a leader. The path through which it goes on to take place is called as a leader. And during this electric breakdown, the mobile electrons in the cloud base begin to flow down this channel. It is through this channel that the, that is happens here. The flow increases the electric potential at the head of the leader and then a lot of changes start taking place. That is, uh, this entire conducting path uh, goes on to give, become further ionized. Uh, because the its initial path uh, extends itself uh, towards the earth uh, in short uh, and uh, it is nearly invisible burst. It's called by the name of stepped leader. That is the name given to it. It's called as stepped leader. Stepped leader are met by positively recharged return stroke from the ground. It initially goes on to come to the ground and then it is met immediately again, something emanating from the ground above. The return stroke forms a narrow conducting path about 10 centimeters in diameter between the cloud and the ground. And then the electrons start flowing, neutralization occurs here. And see this, that's how exactly it goes to take place if you are looking at it. That is, these are the step leaders. That is one of these paths that we ionize. And then it goes to begin from ground to the cloud, cloud base. That's the way. That is the way. And this photography is not going to be easy at all. See this, how exactly it is going to be moving from ground to the uh, base of the thunder cloud in this case. So we are going to be talking about that is as the electrons go on to flow in this case, yeah, neutralization occurs and the path is illuminated from the ground to the cloud by lightning flash. This is the this is contrary to the common perception eh, as you can go to see it. Eh, common perception that eh, a lightning flash eh, progresses from the cloud to the ground. So it's not from the cloud to the ground. That is a eh, it is going to be from ground to the cloud. Eh, after this initial electric discharge, subsequent surges of negative electric charges from the ground going to take place, eh, which are going to be called by a different name that is called as a dart eh, leader. That is, thereafter it is going to be called by this name, Dart Leader. And they follow the same conducting path and each Dart Leader is met by a return stroke and that is why you are going to see um, several branches of lightning taking place. Uh, that means uh, once it has been illuminated, it will go to take place uh, once again. So there are going to be series of it that start taking place in this manner. 
There is not one, not two, several of them. As you can go to see, this is what it goes on to show. There is a, a small amount of a charge goes on to find itself onto the ground and then from the ground to the cloud base. This is how it happens. So typically a single lightning strike consists of mainly uh, two or four dark readers plus return strokes uh, and electricity goes on to flow through such type of things. Uh, and uh, of course uh, when this has happened uh, you're going to see the light first, you're going to see the lightning first uh, and followed by the thunder. That's because of the delay of some three seconds between flash and thunder for every kilometer of a distance. Of course uh, uh, the sound doesn't go to travel as fast as it it goes on to travel. When a lightning occurs more than 20 km away, thunder is rarely heard. And this type of lightning is called as heat lightning. Then you have sheet lightning. Now when you go on to see only lightning and that is that may be 20 kilometers away then this is called as heat lightning and it is no different from the lightning that is associated with the thunder and maybe it is going to be from cloud to cloud lightning that goes into take place this is going to be called by the name of sheet lightning from one cloud to another cloud and this is a very spectacular variation of lightning because it goes into form brilliant jack balls between the sky and the ground and so on now such type of a lightning which whenever it goes into occur that is responsible for illuminating the entire of the nighttime sky and is one of the most uh, most uh, astonishing of the geophysical phenomena that we go on to know of. These thunderstorms is going to produce lightning, they are full of energy, are an energy reservoir and they go on to get their energy from the condensation that goes on to take place in the clouds. Lightning is a problem as well. Problem in the sense that is, uh, it, it can go on to be a disaster as well, unmitigated disaster and good number of people go on to die. But then this goes on to become a part of disaster management. To have more such discussions and analysis, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos.